This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. I pressed a hand in my side, healing the worst of the wounds with a curse as I was forced to pause my advance. Caleb appeared as nothing more than a blur of red and blue flames as he shot all around the forest with his vampire speed. The twin daggers Darcy had crafted him tearing through the nymphs before they even realized he was close. My skin prickled with the urge to shift, and a dragon's roar left my lips as smoke coated my tongue. But there was no room for me to shift here between the trees. Besides, I liked the way it felt when my new axe carved through my enemies too much to abandon it. When Darcy had presented us with these weapons, my heart had ached for her. For the pain she was in with her sister and Lance gone, and the weight of the world pressing down on her. I shared the torture of their loss with her, so I understood the burden of it more than well enough. But instead of crumbling beneath the agony of their loss, she'd risen to the challenge and spent the summer helping us to try and track down the Imperial Star. Roxy had made the sacrifice Gabriel had predicted, stopping Father from finding it for now, and we refused to allow her sacrifice to be for nothing. And now that Darcy had armed the four of us with weapons that could withstand the nymphs, and cut through them as easily as if they were made of paper, there was nothing that could stop us from finding it. Max bellowed a challenge from his position on Seth's back, in his huge white wolf form, as they charged through the clearing and he fired an arrow flaming with phoenix fire right over my head. A nymph exploded into dust as the arrow punched a hole in its chest, and Max guided it back to him on a gust of wind in a move he'd been practicing tirelessly since Darcy had forged his gift. He instantly placed the arrow in the bow and aimed again as I raced forward behind them. Seth's front paws were clad in gleaming metal, the claws able to ignite with phoenix fire and tear through the barky flesh of the nymphs like a hot knife through butter. I swung my axe with savage abandon, Black blood splattering my face and arms as I killed again and again, but no matter how many enemies I destroyed, it felt like the tide was never-ending. My heart was pounding to a frantic rhythm as I searched the darkness between the trees for Darcy. She'd run ahead using a concealment spell despite my command for us to stick together, and panic was warring beneath my skin for every moment that passed without a sign of her. I'd given Roxy my word that I'd protect her sister before she'd fallen into the shadows and been taken by my father, and it was the only thing I could do for her at the moment. Besides, I'd formed a bond with Darcy of my own in the last six weeks. We'd been meeting up as often as I could get away from the manor in secret so that she could try and burn the shadows out of me. If I could just get free of them, then Clara couldn't control me anymore, and I'd be able to strike at her and father. But it wasn't working. I was pushing and pushing for Darcy to use ever stronger flames, but they were coming closer to roasting me alive from the inside out than they were to destroying the shadows. She'd refused to attempt it at all this past week since I'd passed out from the agony of them, and Max had struggled to heal me in time to save my life. But I didn't want to stop trying. I needed to break free so that I could stand against my father and rescue the girl I loved. The pain of my separation from Roxy cut me open and made me bleed with every day that passed. Father held her life in his hands, and he'd threatened her to stop me from trying to track her down. Not that that had stopped me. I knew he held her somewhere in the manor, and I'd been spending every waking hour searching for her, but I'd never even found a clue to her whereabouts. But sometimes, in the dead of night, I woke suddenly, sure I'd heard her screaming alone in the dark.